Hello, I'm um, Dr. Ron Eglin, and this is uh, COP4709, Applied Database 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a very simple method to call a stored procedure from Visual Studio Code. And this is very straightforward, very easy to do. Um, requires a little bit of, uh, you know, just knowing a little bit of the, of the tricks here to, to make it work. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our, for this example, it's going to be using our registration database. And in this registration database, um, I'm going to look at a specific stored procedure here, um, which is the stored procedure to add a student. This is a good example to work off of because it's very straightforward. If I look at the add student stored procedure, that stored procedure simply takes two parameters takes the first name and the last name as input parameters and all it does is inserts that into the table students last name matching last name first name matching first name and that table has an identity field for the ID of the student which will automatically increment as you insert the students so that's the what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this store procedure from my interface and insert um, values into the uh, table. Now what I've done here is I've created a form in Visual Studio. You should already know how to do this. I created a form called insert students. I have, um, if you look at the source, I have a little bit of text first name. I have a text box called TV first. I have some text that says last name. I have a text box for TV last and I've created a button. What I'm going to do is once you input the first name and the last name in here, and you click on the button, it's going to call that store procedure. Now I want to do this, this is very, very straightforward and easy way to do this. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my toolbox, okay, bring my toolbox over here, and the, the tool that I need here is a SQL data source. So I'm going to drop a SQL data source onto here. I'm going to use that to call the stored procedure. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my toolbox now, and I'm going to configure my data source here. Now I'm going to do this entirely with visual tools here. So I'm going to configure, and um, I already have made a connection string. I have other videos on how to create that connection string to the database. Uh, I am going to, and to do this, I'm going to actually specify custom SQL or stored procedure in my options. And in this case, um, for the select, now what this will do is allow you to have four different pieces of SQL depending upon uh, what you want to do. So um, if I call select, it will it will use this SQL. If I do update, it'll do a different one, insert, and delete. Well, all I want to do is I'm going to use the select. Okay, so now for the select, I'm not going to write the SQL. I'm going to specify store procedure, and I'm going to specify the store procedure. SP add student. Okay, so that's my stored procedure that I'm going to use. And um, if I call the select method of my SQL data source, it's going to run this stored procedure. Now, to do that, I actually have to have the parameters that the stored procedure has. Now, this will automatically go to the database and read the two parameters that the input parameters from the stored procedure. And I need to set where it's going to get those values from. Now I can specify them explicitly, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them from controls. So the first name I'm going to get from TB first, and the last name I'm going to get from a control, and I'm going to get that from TB last. So what I've done is I've told the stored procedure that's going to run where to get its values from. All right, so now it knows where to get the values from. It's really nothing to test in the query. Um, if I hit test query, it's going to bring up a little box that allows me to put values in there. Okay, but I don't need to do that. I've already tested my stored procedure. So now I'm done here with configuring the data source. Now, this data source will pull the values from those two text boxes and submit them to the database. But the thing is, it doesn't know how to submit them to the database. So I want it to occur when I click the submit button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click in the design view, I'm going to double click the submit button and that's going to bring up the event handler for the clicking of the submit button, btn submit. 
Don't worry about the event args and the object. We're actually not going to use those here. But what I want to do in this case is I want that SQL data source, SQL data source 1, to call the select. And the select actually has um, some, uh, an argument that needs to be sent to it, data source select arguments. Well, in this case, it's automatically getting arguments. So I need to get around how am I going to put this required input parameter. Well, to do that, I actually put the object data source select arguments dot empty. Basically, I'm not going to pass anything to the select statement. It's going to get them automatically. Now, I want to do one more thing with this to make it work well. I want to clear out the text boxes after I do this. So I'm going to go tb first dot text is equal to string dot empty. I'm going to go tb last dot text equals string dot empty. So those text boxes are just going to be emptied. Every time you hit the, su the submit button, it's going to let you input a new one. Oh, and I actually have to spell it right. Okay, those little errors, but that's what that red bar tells you. Okay, so now I'm done. I can go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, it's going to bring up good old internet. Uh, in this case, I use Firefox. It's going to bring up Firefox. And I'm going to enter the name um, Quick Draw. Now, if I go over here, I haven't hit the submit button yet. If I go over here to my table, okay, which is my tables, which is my students, I'm going to select the top 1,000 rows. The last student I entered was A, B down here at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to go over here and hit submit. Notice it cleared out my text boxes. And now if I go back over here to my table and I refresh my table, I'll notice that I have good old quick draw has now been added to my database. So as you can see, I very easily, very simply created a nice simple form, pulled the information from the text boxes, called a stored procedure, submitted the data into the database. Nice and easy um, process here. So um, this will be very, very useful to you in the design and, and, and creating an interface using .NET. Thanks.